Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to show you how you can use garden fabric, it's called ag fabric, insect fabric, mesh. Basically, it's mesh, water can get through it, sunlight can get through it, the insects cannot get through it. And with a larger garden now, I don't mind using neem oil and BT and other products, I just want to spray less. So if you don't want to use any chemicals, in your garden to stop the white moth, and I'm sure we'll have some coming around, and other moths and butterflies from laying eggs on your cabbages, your kales, your plants. You can use this garden fabric. Underneath it, here's my cabbage, and I'll show you how I built it, but it's basically getting some lumber just like this, stapling it on, and then you have an easy way that you can lift it over, pull it under the leaves, It'll close it off, and then if you need to get to it, you can take it off. Cabbage is doing well. There are no holes in there, and that's because the butterflies and moths cannot get to it. Let me show you how I set this up and talk more about the different fabric and give you some ideas of how you can use zero chemicals and protect your plants from chewing insects. So no need to make this video longer than it has to be. You're going to get your micro mesh your insect fabric, your garden fabric. It looks just like this. It has holes in it. It's plastic. When you're buying it, I don't recommend a specific brand, but you want to look for something that's UV stabilized so that the sun doesn't degrade it and you can get several seasons out of it. To make it, you just need some wood posts. You can really customize this to whatever size you want to use. These are eight foot posts. The one by ones are about three bucks at Lowe's, Home Depot. You can get these finishing pieces of wood, they're a little less expensive. They're both heavy enough to do what you need. So the wood is eight feet long. My beds are four feet by eight feet. So this is perfect. On the ends, right here, this was my prototype. You wanna leave at least two feet, three feet. There's more on there than you actually need. And that will be able to be tucked in. Get some pa um, paper clips, get some clothes pins, and that will help you close them off on the ends and this way, nothing will be able to get into it. But, simple. You'll need to get a staple gun. They're about 20 bucks. You're going to just lay the wood on, roll it over, staple it in a couple of inches, or maybe six inches all the way down. You roll it one more time. You get the underside. You can really space it out, whatever you feel comfortable with and that's going to secure it and then you can store this real easily. You can roll it together, put it away and it's wide enough, that's the other strategy, that depending on what you're growing you may want the width to be four feet, five feet or six feet because you're going to have the plant growing upward so you can design it how you want. This is a hundred foot long roll, four feet wide. I'm going to use this for mostly for kale and cabbages and this is how I would set it up. So let me bring it back over to the cabbage and talk about something very important. So just in the amount of time that I took this out to the field and showed you how to build it, the white butterfly was landing on here laying eggs. So when you're setting this up, you can design it again however you want to whatever size you want. This is Captain Jack's dead, bu dead bug insect dust. You want to go through and dust everything and you want to treat this while it's under the garden fabric for at least a week because anything that might be hatching or there you want to kill off. The setup is real easy. I like using these pieces of wood that, the, that are the lengths of my raised bed. I just slide it under here, take the other side, bring it across, and then work it under the leaves. Now again, this one's a little bit long, but you would just pull it together, and then you just use clothes pins if you need to. There's plenty here, so I can just bunch it under. But then you can just pin this off as you need throughout whatever design you create. But this will keep the green cabbage looper from getting onto your kales, your cabbages, your broccolis, and it really, really works. It's really effective. Don't forget to treat it when you put it down the first time for about a week. You can water on here. Rain will go through here. It's really, really effective. Hope this gives you some ideas of how you can use a non-chemical method to keep insects off of your garden vegetables. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.